Welcome to iLecture Online and in this example we're going to try and figure out how much force is required to push a dielectric between the capacitor plates when the capacitor is hooked up to a battery that provides the potential of V volts and what we know is that the um, of course before we put the dielectric in there we know we're going to have some charge on the capacitor and we know that the energy stored in the capacitor before the dielectric is in there, the energy U, let's call it U initial without the dielectric, is equal to one half times the charge times the voltage on that capacitor. And so let's call it Q initial because we know that once we put the dielectric on there, the battery will drive additional charge onto the capacitor, increasing the energy stored in the capacitor, but the potential V will remain the same, will remain V across the uh, capacitor plates. So the initial energy is U sub naught. The final energy, U final, is going to be equal to one half times Q final times V. Now what is Q final relative to Q initial? Well, in the previous video, we saw that Q final will be equal to K times Q initial, K being the dielectric constant. So if K is three, you put a dielectric in there, Q final would be three times Q initial. So the energy will increase by factor of k. So what we can say here is that u final will be equal to k times one half q initial times v. And this, of course, is the initial energy. So u final will be equal to k times u initial. All right, so that's how much the energy will increase because what will happen once the dielectric gets pushed between the plates, the potential will then drive additional charges onto the plates. So once the the dielectric is in here, you'll end up with a lot more charge on the capacitor, thus increasing the potential. Now, that will require work. To put additional charge on the capacitor will require additional work, and so there will be a certain amount of force that needs to be applied to the dielectric to push the dielectric in there. So what you can say is that the work done by the force must equal the increase in the energy stored in the capacitor. So we can say that the work done is equal to the change in the energy stored in the capacitor, which means it's going to be the uh, energy final minus energy initial, and the energy final would be K times energy initial minus energy initial, so this would be equal to energy initial times K minus one. So that would be the work done to push the dielectric between the capacitor plates. So how much force is that required? Well, let's assume that the area is equal to L times L. Let's say we have a square capacitor where the sides are equal to L. And so the work done is equal to force times distance. So the force times distance is equal to U sub naught times K minus one. Now, is it going to be a constant force? And the answer is yes, it's a constant force because the amount of energy increase will be directly proportional to the amount of distance or dx that gets covered by the dielectric. So for every small amount of increase in dielectric in the plates, the amount of charge will increase and the amount of energy will increase. It's all a linear proportion. So therefore, yes, the force will be constant. So in other words, we can then say that force will be equal to the energy difference, which is the initial energy times k minus 1, divided by the distance. So let's throw some numbers in there to get kind of a feel of what that may be. So let's say that the L is equal to 2 centimeters on each side. Let's say that the separation distance D is equal to, um, not that we were given it here, but let's say the separation distance D is equal to 0 0.1 millimeter. Let's say that the dielectric constant, I believe, let's call it 3. And what else do we need? Let's say that the potential is equal to 50 volts. All right. I think from that, we can probably figure out how much charge we had on the capacitor. Because remember that Q initial, so from the definition of capacitance, we have capacitance is equal to Q over V. So from that, we can say that Q is equal to C times V. And the capacitance will depend upon, of course, the physical dimensions of the capacitor, which when we have all these dimensions, we can say that's equal to uh, epsilon sub naught times A over D. We have to multiply times the potential. So the original capacitance is going to be 
8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Multiply times the area, it would be 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters, so 0.02 meters squared, divided by the separation distance, which is 0.0001 meter. And then we have to multiply it times the voltage, which is 50 volts. So that will give us the capacitance initially, before we put the dielectric in there, of the capacitor. So let's find out what that is. So 8.85 e to the 12 minus times 0 0.02 squared divided by 0 0.0001 and multiplied times 50. So I have a capacitor of 1.77 nanofarads. So it's equal to 1.77 nanofarads, which is 1.77 times 10 to the minus 9 farads. And that's correct. All right. Now we can calculate the energy stored in the capacitor before we put the dielectric in there. So U initial is equal to, based on the equation, 1 half Q initial times V. And so, oh, wait a minute. This is Q. So not farads, this is going to be coulombs, not nanofarads, but coulombs, because we calculated the charge, not the capacitance, but the charge on the capacitor. So initial energy is one half the charge, which is 1.77 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs, times the potential of 50 volts. So take that answer times 25, and we have 4.5. 425 times 10 to the minus 8 joules. So that's the original energy. What's the final energy? Well, the final energy would be twice as much, so the delta energy would be uh, three times as much, so the delta energy would be twice as much. So delta U is equal to K minus 1, which is 3 minus 1 times original U, which is 2 times that quantity. So times 2 equals, that would be 8.85 times 10 to the minus 8 joules. That's the increase of the energy accomplished by pushing the dielectric in between the plates. So now what we can say is that the force is equal to the increase energy divided by the distance. So F is equal to the increase in the energy, which is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 8 joules divided by the distance, which is 2 centimeters, 0 0.02 meters. And so the, there the, for the force divided by 0 0.02 equals, the force required would be 4.425 times 10 to the minus 6 newtons. And that force would be required to push that dielectric in between the two plates. So, kind of interesting, it's not a lot of force, but of course we're talking about a very thin dielectric and very small dimensions. But there's a good example of that, the fact that when you try to put a dielectric in a capacitor that's already hooked up to a potential, to a, to a battery like this, already has charge on it, by pushing the dielectric in there, you'll add more charge to the capacitor, you'll increase the energy stored in the capacitor, therefore it will require a force which you can actually calculate. Because the work done by the force, or some distance, equals the increase in the internal energy of the capacitor. And that's how we do that.